All right. Leslie, okay. how are hey. you? How's good. I mean, under the circumstances, I'm doing very well. Are you good? Very grateful. Good. All good. Good. Yeah. You're, you're isolated. You're distancing. Healthy. Dis That's social right. distancing. Yes. It's, it's, all, uh, it's all part of the new normal. Yeah, that's exactly. That's it. So we made a bunch of, we made a list of questions. Um, I care less about business and more about personal. So we start with the personal questions and then we'll okay. talk about business when we get okay. done. You ready? All right. Yeah, sure. All right, here we go. So <laughs> I asked this of a friend of mine, on a scale of one to a thousand, how crazy is this? Oh my God. So we're, we're off that scale. There's we're like off that no scale. scale. That's, we're that's totally, right totally off the scale. I, I mean- couldn't agree more. I don't even know if it's crazy. It's just, yeah. Well, now people are writing and they're saying craziest. They're not even writing crazy times, like craziest times. Craziest time. Craziest. Yeah. So they're, yeah. they're writing craziest. And I mean, look, none of us have experienced this. No. Yet. And, and never, never should we ever again. And it feels so. like a movie every single day. And you, you know, here I am. I'm in my kitchen. You're in your house. And... You know, the last time I saw you, we were on Park Avenue in the 80s. So right? I, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a little, it's a little. And it's, it's amazing how three weeks feels so long. Yes. Right? Yeah. I thought it was a month. And then we were walking the dogs the other day and my girlfriend opened up her calendar and she said, okay, one, two, three, it's been three weeks. And I was like, I, it feels, it right. just feels so much longer. Much longer. And uh, it is what it is. I mean, you know. So, and uh, we'll figure out what it's going to look like uh, on the back end. But here's uh, here's question two. You okay. Ready? Yes, right. I'm ready. Netflix, Apple, or Amazon Fire? Ooh. Mm. Um, Netflix. I mean, I go to Apple for one or two things, but I've been a Netflix person. And what are you watching on Netflix? Uh, oh, well, Unorthodox was amazing. That's what I hear. I, we haven't watched it yet. Amazing. Yeah. And then Ozark. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Okay. And then I, I'm cheating on your question, but on Hulu, I, Hulu, I did, uh, Little Fires Everywhere. Really? All yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. If you read the book, you might, you know, so. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> In the city, what's the restaurant that you miss the most? So there's um, Paolo's Trattoria mm -hmm. is just down the block from us. And it was kind of home away from home. And I just really miss the spirit of it. So, yeah. Are they doing takeout? Um, we were doing takeout. And then their supplies just uh, dried up. So they can't deliver at the moment. Wow. We wow. made a donation. Wow. So yeah. way to do it. Yeah. Other than food, what's the guilty pleasure you miss the most? So, you know, what it first came to mind, this is kind of crazy. I kind of wanted to go like the gym, like a dance class. Okay. Like, like sweating and dancing with everybody and that community feeling like, sure. I don't know if it's a guilty pleasure, but like that camaraderie, that upbeat sharing, I don't know. That's, you know that, uh, yeah i do i yeah totally do like, like at a end of a hard day of work like sometimes i would just dance it out that's great and i can dance it out here but it's just kind of <laughs> not the same <laughs> my mom said she's dancing it out at her house she, she puts on diana ross and <laughs> i'm like are the blinds open <laughs> they close because if they're open i i, I don't want to get a phone call from like the new castle <laughs> Oh my God, just that's so hurt. funny. I'm just like, just relax. Um, sweatpants, have they become old yet or still loving sweatpants? Uh, sweatpants? All right, so I am trying to like get dressed. You know, I, I do my thing. I'm showering, getting dressed. Good. I work out first thing in the morning with my trainer. Mm -hmm. I do FaceTime. So I'm trying to have that routine. Um, so... Yeah, they're kind of old, but I'm really trying to like not be in that habit. So definitely not pajamas. So more fitness or more education with the three weeks that Ooh. we've had so far? So I've done a lot of both. Really? Uh, a lot of both. Wow. Like yeah. I have started registered for a whole different certificate and I'm oh. up on my 
continuing education, but that Peloton app, have you downloaded it? The, everybody awesome. says get the Peloton, get the Peloton for the bike. And if you have the Peloton, I say to people, get the Peloton for the app. Cause the yeah. app is ridiculous. The app is so I don't, I don't have a Peloton, but oh. I can use the app. But you have the app. And, yeah. The app going out to the park, like, that walk run like i mean it's just awesome their their strength their strength classes a 20 minute strength class on peloton will kick your butt it's fantastic right? and, and i love been, olivia olivia's like my new friend oh the people on them <laughs> yeah, i know i know they're, they're very they're very high energy it took me like, you were like, so like that and what a gift 90 days free like what a gift that was so smart that's uh they they they're doing 90 days free oh oh i didn't know yeah. that that's great yeah if you're a new subscriber oh. 90 days free smart leader right it's a that's... it's a great lead because i will continue after 90 days i think we're all going to be continuing after 90 yeah. days i don't see that happening i got an email from from the gym in the city going we're suspending your membership and we're now charging you and i said how nice of you because I can't go there. Can't use so it. it's like, how nice of you not to charge me for something that I can use. <laughs> that's terrific. I read the email. I was like, oh, that's terrific. That's great. Thank that's you. Great. Thank you so much for not taking my money for nothing. Um, what's the best meal you've eaten in 21 days? Oh, that's a really good one. Um, we have been using our steam oven. Ah. Yeah. So we've been going through the wolf menu. <laughs> Oh, it's testing. got the yeah, it's got the thing, right? <laughs> of testing, but no, they actually have they actually have a whole menu cookbook thing. So we've been testing that out, right? Um, but I have to say, we've made some mean steaks, some good barbecue chicken in um, the steam oven. No, those no. are kind of <laughs> <laughs> no, but his chicken's been my husband's chicken in the steam oven is really good. People love the steam oven. Yeah, they think it's the greatest invention. No yeah, you know, you know, like as brokers and what you do, we kind of pick and choose what we see and what we want. And when I was sure. doing our home, that was a priority. First time we ever put the steam oven in, we neglected to run a water line to the steam oven and the project's almost completed. And I'm like, I think we were supposed to run a water line to the steam oven. And so I called my plumber and I go, Anthony, I got to get a water line across the ceiling. He got it across the ceiling. I, the, the next day he's like, we're done. I look up at the ceiling. There's not a single hole in the ceiling. And oh I said, how the hell did you get the water from this side of the kitchen to that side of the kitchen? He goes, job security. I said, you're absolutely right. This, I'm not, I didn't want to know. I right? just, that was it. And, amazing. and people think uh, the greatest thing in the world, amazing. even if they cook an egg, they think yeah. it's, oh, they think it's oh. I'm seriously, I'm so serious. We had to do, he had to do the hard boiled eggs. Like, That's it. Right? That's it. Yeah. A client of mine yeah. goes to the goes to the showroom and they said, We're gonna show you how to cook a hard boiled egg. I go, Oh my god, I got like I got a 1230. Really? Is this what we're doing? And they go, Yeah, and they made it. They served the egg to the woman, and the woman goes, It's the best egg I ever had. And I go, See? That's that's ridiculous. She goes, It's perfect. <laughs> and she bought the oven. Now, she's probably <laughs> never turned on the steam feature. <laughs> We took a class there. It was great. Yeah, they give classes. Yeah, they, yeah. Uh, yeah. At, at, on Fifty Eighth Street. Yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. not on hard boiled eggs. It was something else. <laughs> oh, yeah. They'll definitely do something more. The, the chef there, his name is Coleman. Amazing. Yeah. He's it's great. Amazing. It's a, great. It's absolutely amazing. So, yeah. all right. Yeah. Best read. Oh, have you read the Moth? No. No. Is it good? It looks it's really good. It's um. I played ping pong yesterday. Does that count? I don't think it counts. <laughs> it totally counts. <laughs> it's fifty short stories, oh. but they're they're so beautifully written, and you have everyone from like Malcolm Malcolm Gladwell, really really good inspirational. Pick it up, put it down. Right. Fifty great yeah. short stories. That's good for yeah. my. Uh, that's good for my. Yeah. my they also supposedly today. have a podcast, The Moth. Really. Yeah, it's supposed to be amazing. I mean, same, similar. All right. I haven't, haven't listened. Okay. Yeah, how about you? Good reads? Oh, no, not at all. It took, I, I did nothing for the first two weeks. It took me like a week just to get acclimated to not running at 1,000 miles an hour. The yeah. second week, I was getting acclimated to running at like 
four miles an hour. And in the third week, I was like, all right, I got a little, you know, I'm like, all right, we got to get going here. But people would say like, what are you doing? I go, nothing. And I'm making no apologies for it. Nothing. We're watching, you know, we're watching Gossip Girls at night because we're in a house with a 10 year old and a 14 year old. Right, right, right. More than I've ever cooked in my life. And short of that, I don't want to make any apology. I'm like, nothing. Now I started. I am you know. cleaning more than I've ever cleaned in my entire life. Yeah. I bought a carpet uh, shampooer. Yeah. <laughs> I used that. I bought a new vacuum. Right. I bought a new vacuum. <laughs> and the carpet shampooer. I was shampooing carpets last night at like 630. And I thought to myself, it's Thursday night at 630. All right. It's Passover. That's a different conversation for <laughs> another time. And I'm thinking, when was the last time I was sitting still at 6.30 on a Thursday night? Forget shampooing the carpets in the bedroom. And it's that surreal lack of schedule. Yeah. That, you know, it, it just has me going, You're, really? Seriously, this is what I'm doing? And, <laughs> and that's what I'm doing. Um, but I will say, in my enthusiasm for cleaning, my husband bought me six mops to test. Really? Yes. It's like QVC in your house. Seriously. All right, which is the, so let's say this is the question and answer, which is the best mop? It's that old traditional mop, the squeegee one. Mm -hmm. It's just like nothing compares. I tried all these new things, yeah. There's a, Classic. there's a bucket that you can put a mop into with, <laughs> with a salad spinner attached to it. And I bought it a year ago and I never touched it. And it was in the garage and I opened the box and I'm like, let me check this out. And you put the, this, you know, the cleaning solution and the water in the bucket, you move the mop around there, you take the mop and you put it in, in this salad spinner attachment and yeah. you hit the, the lever about three or four times and it yeah. spins all the water out of the mop. And I'm thinking, this is the things that turn me on at this point. <laughs> like this is, this is it. It's like, you know, my priorities. I love my washer and dryer. Now I love it even more. I pray every day it doesn't break. This is what I care about. Like the dishwasher started it's to make true. noise. It's horrible. It's, it's crazy. I just, I pray for the things that don't, the lights went out in my, in my hood over my stove. I shorted out the lights because I changed the light bulb. And when I changed the light bulb, the hood is 14 years old and it shorted out the circuit. I was ready to cry. That, that kind of thing. But as long as the dishwashers keep working, right. I'm, I'm terrific. So, all right, here we go. Okay. $1,000. Do you take it or do you give it for a pedicure after three weeks? <laughs> all right. Honest answer. Yeah. I'm taking the $1,000. I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm taking it and I'm doing all the works. So there you go. Petty, I'm, petty, I'm, I'm digging it. All right. And the last thing. Yeah. Um, well, you said you're, you're getting dressed up for video calls. You're, you're going through the motions, which is great. I'm, tr you know, I'm just trying to keep a routine. I'm yeah. trying to like make it a routine. My husband and I get up in the morning. I do my little workout. We have a cup of coffee. I go to my office. He goes to his office trying to keep a routine going. That's great. That's great. Um, aside from the gym what's the one little tiny thing that you think you probably took for granted that you really really miss and it could, oh. it could be the gym it could be the working out no i don't know i mean i think god the one i actually started thinking about this one little thing i just miss people yeah you know yeah. and i i don't know how i would have acted any differently and i'm so appreciative but yeah. that's you know so i don't I don't know if it's being in the office or the fact that I could walk down Madison Avenue and walk in anywhere and have that right. social interaction or I don't, you know, that's a hard one. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to just like people. things coming back to life. Yeah, people coming yeah. back. All right, now let's get to the business stuff. You know who my heroes are yeah. though? Oh. Like those people at the checkout counter. 100%. The that hundred thousand. They are. They're my heroes. And yeah. I don't know uh, how to show enough gratitude. That's it. I mean, they the are. nurses and the doctors. I mean, forget the nurses. Yeah, sorry. I know that. They that, that is. No, right. I mean, the doctors, the everybody, the, like the male people, the people at the grocery stores, like. The people at the grocery stores. You hit it on the head. For me, it's the same thing. They're, we were talking about the other night. 
They're on the front line. They are, and they didn't sign up for this. This is no. you know, this is a minimum wage gig kind of thing, right? and they're usually kids. Yes, and there they are, and without I'm them, just we're toast. So appreciative. I, I so I think the you know like if I could in the end walk in and really show my gratitude. Yeah. Besides not wearing a mask, I think that would be. I know, I feel exactly the same way and, and I have the same interaction and, and go to the same supermarket here yeah. and I've seen the same checkout kid three times in a row and I keep saying, how you doing? How do you feel? Da, da, da. Don't touch this, I'll touch this. And right. this, is what they're, this is what they're doing. And without them, we're like, we're toast. We're toast. Yeah. I, I said, like the guy who picks up the garbage. I called the garbage company out here and I said, I need a second pickup because we're cooking so much. We're just cranking garbage like there's no tomorrow. And she goes, I'll get you in for tomorrow. And I said, I can't thank you enough. And I said, thank you right. for doing such a great job. And she said, that's so sweet. No one ever says that to the garbage people. I go, trust me, yeah. we're like, we have a big problem without you. So no, I waited for the mailman the other day, six feet away, just to say thank you. It's crazy. Right. It, it really, really is. You know, I was talking to somebody yesterday and the commentary he made, and I'll screw it up, was um, just the blind spending of money is going to become a, it's going to be uh, taken a different way when all this is said and done. Because it really is all about these people who are just doing their job keeping this this whole train running without them, yeah. you know, right? it's, it's not, yeah, it's not about an influencer on Instagram or anything like that. No. It, yeah, it, it's all about this. So how's business? It's different. What, what it's is different. business? It's really, yeah, it's really, I mean, look, is business being done? Business is getting done. I think business when it's more a townhouse or new development and there's, there are things happening. Really? Um, yeah, there are. I've been reaching out to my clients, just trying to be in touch and making sure everybody's okay, seeing if I can do anything. Sure. But, you know, any business is business that has been in the works already. So that's right. really what I'm finding. So, right. like, I had a Zoom board interview and, you know, I mean, things are just different. Closings so board, are being put so off. So boards yeah. are doing Zoom? Yeah. Really? Just to keep it going? Yeah. Just to keep it going. Wow. Managing agents have been great. They've been working. That's great. Um, yeah. I mean, look, there's virtual appraisals. There's virtual like mortgages. There's virtual board packages. How does a virtual appraisal work? So supposedly they're looking at floor plans. Like I don't have a situation, but they're looking at floor plans. They're looking at pictures. If there's any question, maybe they put some money aside but they're doing it and they're wow. looking at the last six months of comps just because that's what they have. Wow. There's no, there's no new. Yeah. That's I, you would think that's the hardest thing to do virtually. And that's, yeah. that's happening. And do you think that's, what do you think is going to happen when the green light goes on? Do you think this level of virtual life is going to exist to this extent? Do you think it's going to completely I, change? It's, I think our, I think we're going to have a new normal, which I think virtual life is going to be a huge part of it. You know, I think it's going to take a while. Like, I think it's going to just change our business. And so that will be a first level of getting to know a property will be more virtual. And then should they be really interested? I think then they'll come. I mm. think it's going to take some time. Yeah. Time I don't think, you know, some people may buy sight unseen, but I think no matter what, I think people want to see their final product. Right, right. So and I think people still always have that. And walk it. And that's what I meant. See the final product, like really walk it, feel it, make sure there isn't something that was missed on the cameras, right? How can you trust everything? Sure. Yeah. So deals are still being done. Deals are still being done. Um, we'll be it. Albeit smaller. Albeit that. Smaller. What about what about new inquiries? Are people? I mean, you know, you see the stock market is up from the low. I yeah. think yesterday it was up like thirty percent, thirty and change from the low. Are are people you know starting to hit you know the phone? Are they dialing? Or are they? I had I had more inquiries actually when it first started. Okay. I think people had 
like were, had nervous energy, they were online, they were looking, and I had a lot of a lot more of that going on. I don't know if it'll pick back up again. Okay. I'm certainly trying to remarket my properties for the future. Um, okay. Spending time doing that now. What do you have? What's a, what's a, what are your what are the two properties that you just love? You can't you know you can't wait to. Uh, I- I have one coming on that I just think is so amazing at 25 Sutton Place. It's a huge masonette, huge yeah. duplex. That's just killer. Um, so, and then 829 Park, great duplex. Yep, I saw like that. Sea line, you saw that, right? Saw that. It's the it's largest sea line in the building. Yep. So, it could be amazing five bedroom, five bath, four yep. bedroom, with a big, yeah. Yeah, so, we did one of those. It's a great, and it's a great building. Great, a great building. Great location. The duplexes are really, really nice. They're really elegant, and yeah, like, yeah. And it's priced so well for three million dollars to get. Like this is truly could be five bedrooms, five baths. So, what do you think prices look like when the dust settles? Because people are asking me for renovations. What do you think the renovation numbers are going to look like? And I'm like, unless the insurance companies figure out a way to drop the price of insurance. I don't see the price of renovations going down that much. I see potentially a, a bigger glut of people looking for work, but fixed numbers are fixed numbers and insurance and some of the overhead numbers are kind of what they are. What do you think right. is gonna happen with price? Yeah, you know, I think that's a really, I think it's a really interesting question because I think what we're going to see is you might have some sellers that are a bit more nervous who are willing to negotiate a bit more, a little bit more flexibility, but we haven't had a huge amount of inventory. So right. it's a supply and demand, right? And so it's really going to be whether people start exiting a bit more or does that second home become that much more important or you know, are people going to want a slightly bigger home because they're going to need a home office that they've never really thought about? So I'm not quite sure, like, what direction we're going to go in. So I think we may see a slight dip, but I think it will be a slight and short dip. I think that estates are going to sit because there's no urgency to sell them unless the estate needs to cash out. Right. And, And so... People who need to get out, obviously, who are alive and selling their property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where it becomes an interesting dynamic. But I'm also wondering what's going to happen with new construction, because I think it's going to be an uptick for new construction. Because, so yeah, because you, you tell me why you think so. I, have a I think it's going to be an uptick for new construction because if somebody handed me four million dollars and said go buy an apartment, with all the uncertainty in the world how, and it's going to be interesting for my business, how do people calculate buying an estate? And then, you know, let's say we, let's say we get an estate property with a client that's 3,500 square feet or 4,000 square feet. And someone says to me, well, how long is it going to take? And I usually say from the shake of my hand till the move-in of your child, you have to figure it's a year to 13 months, all in, all done, permits, planning, and all of that. Okay, when it's a relatively normal world, you can put that into a, a file of facts, into a calendar and say, okay, this is not a normal world anymore. So what are people going to renovate? What's their timeline going to be? I mean, the ultra wealthy are going to have money. That's not the issue. It's right. going to be who's, you know, what does that person look like that's going to want to buy something and go through the year process? and then hope that the world looks exactly the way it looked like when they bought it on the other side. Yeah. That's what I'm interested in. Big trust. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's I think that's going to be a big deal. My business as well as the people buying and selling the apartments that need, and the town has that need a lot of work. So it's, uh, you know, we, we have a couple of projects going on right now and projects are being closed well early in, in March just because people aren't going to let people in the building. So the question of is, course. Yeah, yeah. So do no, townhouses become big, more valuable? Absolutely. Yeah. So, no. you, know, you know, and I think there might be a sensitivity, like some people who wanted a larger apartment may want a townhouse where you don't have to worry about people coming in and out. That's it. 
That's exactly yeah. right. So I, yeah. I think, you know, it's a whole, it's like I said, the first two weeks, I'm cooking short ribs. I'm doing a lot of nothing. But now you start to say, okay, it, we're going to come out of it. Now, what does it look like? And, you know, I don't know. I was around for 9-11. I was around, yeah. I was around for the recession in the 90s. I was around, yeah. you know, so the question is, what does this look yeah. like? You know, but all of that changes with a vaccine. Right. Absolutely. That's it. All of the changes with the vaccine. You know, it yeah. beca this becomes a memory of crazy with a vaccine. Yeah. And, yeah. and then you're, and then and you're back to, you're back. you're back. Then you're totally back. Right. You're back to you the biggest problem you have is boards who give a turn down to perfectly legitimate people and a buyer, <laughs> and world's a, seller normal, yeah. a seller who wants, you know, 9 million for something that's worth five and a half. Short of that, you're back. But that's exactly. it. vaccine cures yeah. all problems. No, no yeah. pun intended. Yeah, so, and hopefully this becomes a distant, yeah. That would be nice. That that certainly would be nice. So mm -hmm. you're all you're you're hunkered down for the foreseeable future. I am. You're waiting, I am. You're waiting for the green light to come on. It's great to see your face. I know. I, I look always, forward to seeing always, it. In, I look forward to seeing it in, in you know in person. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, thanks thanks for coming on and uh, and talking. No, always anything soon. for you. Stay safe. You too. See you soon. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye-bye.